Welcome back to another episode of Weapons Wednesday. I'm Jonathan Bernstein, the museum's arms and armor curator. As the 19th century came to a close, automatic firearms had become standard equipment for modern militaries around the world. The hand-cranked, carriage-mounted, Gatling-type weapons of the latter half of the 19th century were quickly becoming things of the past, replaced by more man-portable machine guns with much higher rates of fire. However, most of these machine guns were still heavy and required a crew of men to transport, feed, and service the weapon. In the years prior to the outbreak of World War I, a number of firearms designers attempted to address this and create a machine gun that, not, that only required a single soldier to fire and maintain. France was fairly successful with their adventures into these lighter weapons, first with the Benet Mercier Model 1909, which was adopted by the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps uh, as the Mark IV and M1909, respectively. The Benet Mercier still required a crew of two, a gunner and a loader, to operate effectively. But another French design showed significant promise as an even lighter, more portable weapon, uh, weapon system. Uh, the Berthier Model 1911 was a lightweight, water-cooled automatic rifle that had a streamlined water jacket around the barrel and fed from a top-mounted 30-round box magazine. According to Lieutenant Colonel George Chin, the Marine Corps Ordnance Officer who chronicled the development of the machine gun and tested the Berthier, uh, he said, many countries made inquiries and experimented at odd times with this machine rifle. However, France, the home of the inventor, seemed to go to great lengths to ignore it. Well, the weapon did catch the attention of both the U.S. Army and the U.S. Marine Corps in 1916, and both branches began testing the type in May 1917, just a month after entering World War I. The Army was very quick to say the Berthier didn't meet their requirements, but on 29 June, the Marine Corps said it actually met all of their requirements and moved to adopt it. Well, the Army then reassessed the weapon and fell in line uh, pretty quickly after that. On 2 October, a contract was awarded to the Hopkins and Allen Company to produce 5,000 guns for the Army and an additional 2,000 for the Navy and Marine Corps. Hopkins and Allen began producing a short run of pilot models before going into full production, but the firm fell into financial trouble very quickly and the contracts were canceled, leaving just a handful of examples. Now, this particular gun is serial number one. And you can clearly see the difference between the French water-cooled and the American air-cooled uh, guns. Now, the French weapon fired the standard 8mm LaBelle round, while the U.S. round was built around our 30 6 uh, cartridge. Now, this weapon had the potential to become the Berthier automatic rifle, the first American BAR, a full year before the Browning automatic rifle came into service. However, with the cancellation of the contract, American Marines and soldiers were forced to go to war with the less than desirable French show shot until the Browning automatic rifle was ready in August of 1918. The Berthier remains an interesting footnote on what could have been in both US and French military history. For more information on the Arms and Armor Collection and our fascinating artifacts in the Mu National Museum of the Marine Corps, please check out our website and social media pages.